Good morning, pottery peeps. Welcome to Hobble Creek Pottery. I am Tiffany, the main potter here. This is my studio that I teach out of. I am at the mouth of Hobble Creek Canyon in um, Utah. And it is a gorgeous fall day, my favorite season of Utah. So anyway, I um, asked if you guys wanted to see a more simpler uh, fairy house version to leave a comment and a lot of you guys did. So I guess I'm doing more here fairy houses. Behind me on the shelf drying out, let me see if I can get to just a little closer without making you too dizzy. So are a few variations of fairy houses with the tree trunk. But we're gonna do a really simple one to get you jump started and then I can't wait to see where you take it from the jumping off um, point. So this is one that we're gonna make. It's a cute little tree trunk. I actually tried to do a door here, but the um, hole that I left to do a wire or string filled in with the glaze. So if you do plan to do a separate door, <laughs> just beware those holes get closed up with a glaze if you're not paying attention. So this one I actually pulled out of my garden. See, still has dirt on the bottom. So it sits in my garden, so. But it's super cute. It's got a little morning glory, little, um, little cute little fairy house. So um, let me go ahead and get you down. So got a new setup here that I'm still working with. So I hope I just don't like completely drop you down. <laughs> We'll see if this works better. Got a new microphone too. Hopefully it'll take out some of the road noise that I get being on this road that heads up to the canyon. Especially it being Friday today, you can get a little noisy, everybody going up there. And this is my gorgeous mug for today. And I did the Elan um, transfers. I just love how this turned out. As soon as it came out of the kiln, it was mine. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep it simple for tools. Um, got a slab, just making sure you can see me. Like I said, this is a new setup. Let me adjust you just a second. Let me get you a little further down. There we go. That's probably better. Except for my point of gravity is now off. Whoops. So sorry. <laughs> go let's see hmm we're gonna start this okay let's give that a try looks, looks like you can see my slab again I rolled it out um, on my slab roller about three eighths of an inch and then I um, compressed it with my metal rib and I think I just smushed a bug <laughs> that's all right won't make a difference it's all organic might leave a really cool texture so this mat I've had forever, and it's a Mako mat, wood grain. I seriously have probably owned this for 15 years or more. So I don't know if you can still get it. I have seen wood mats all over the place. Um, Amazon's got them. Look for fondant, look for wood texture mats. You'll, you'll be able to find it. So um, basically, I roll it into the clay. You could probably roll the clay on top, but this way I can really see how far I'm getting the texture in. So, roll it in, and then I usually, especially if I'm doing a lot of these or doing a fairly good size fairy house, I'll just line it up, and I actually overlap it a little bit. This is wood texture, and these are fairy houses, so, um, you don't, do not strive for perfection because that just takes all the personality out of it. I don't know about you, but when you come along someone who is perfect, they're kind of boring. <laughs> I like the ones that, um, have character. All right. So, released it from the table. And I forgot my ruler. Hold on just a second while I grab it. So 
not only do I have all my cooking supplies out here in the studio, I even have my quilting ones. <laughs> this is an awesome ruler. It's a quilting ruler. You can see through it. So I'm not too um, worried about size. I do need a knife though. Let's see, there's got to be one in here somewhere. Oh, that'll work. So, just going to get myself a straight line that I'm going to actually end up morphing anyway. This house here was probably four inches. Nope. Let's see. It was three inches. So, let's go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and do some that are that size. So one, two, three, we're about, I mean, if you want to make it exact, you can, the nice thing about this ruler, actually, you know what, I'm going to go three and a half. Actually, I'm going to go four. So I can line up, you start with a straight line and you can line up on these rulers because you can see through them. Okay. So, just going to leave that for later and just cut off some of my extras here. Now, this is going to be enough for two. And like I said, I'm not real particular about making them exactly the right size. If you, I'm going to cover this guy up so I can do something with it later. Let me set it over here. It does not take very much play to do these guys. And they're super fun and fun with kids. You could even try doing them with air dry clay or even, <laughs> um, what's that clay? It's been a while since I've had the kids at home. <laughs> that clay that um, you mix the salt clay or whatever. It would be a fun little activity to do. Okay, so I'm just going to score these guys. I'm going to go ahead and score both of them since they're both right here. Now you can do one or two things. If you want to do your windows and doors when it's down like this in the flat, totally go for it. Um, I don't, mainly because I'm the type of person that um, things evolve as I'm making them. Hold on a second. All my tools are over here. I was doing mugs last night, and of course I was in the red clay, so I'm probably going to mix some of the red clay in with this white stuff, but it's a fairy house, so it won't matter if it gets stained with the red. So I'm just going to slip and score that. And then I will put it together. Actually, let me take this off. I thought I had a bat. There it is. Put this guy up here so it makes it a little easier for you to see. And I literally just pinch them together. When I'm doing a mug, I will be a little bit more careful about this and get a really good joint when I'm doing a fairy house, all bets are off. It gets sloppy. But then the sloppy adds to the fairy house. So I'll get that together. That's usually where I put my door. And then I'm going to smooth that seam from the inside on top. Turn it over, do the same thing. Okay, so now one cool thing, let me get the red off of my tool here. So here's my seam, right? Well, this is wood texture. We'll just add some more texture. You could even roll it back into your mat if you wanted to, you know, just add some texture and that seam magically disappears. Just like that. Okay, just like that. All right, now the next thing I do, this is a tree trunk. So I will morph it and give it some feet. 
So I don't wait for my slab to stiffen up. I do it when it's fairly wet. And then I will take my finger and make that more pronounced. So wherever I put my feet, my roots coming out, I will wet it and thin it out a little bit and kind of, so then it sits like a tree trunk. Cool, right? These are so fun. Because there's just so much you can do, and I will warn you, they're a little addicting to make. <laughs> but, um, and they're super, super, super fun to make. As you can see, I kind of went a little nuts. But, just so you know, don't cuss me out when you're glazing them. Because they can, they can take a lot of time to glaze. All right, let me go ahead and put this one, because I'm only going to do the one right now that I got enough clay to do, I don't know, probably three or four out of that if I did these small ones. So let me go ahead and gather this up. We're going to go ahead and do the roof, okay? And the roof is a pinch pot. And if you've been watching any of my videos, um, this clay is kind of dry. We might have to get some new clay. So I hate wedging small bits of clay. Anyway, so let's wedge this up. But if you've been watching any of my videos, this, um, the way I'm gonna do the roof is how I do the witch hat and also how I do my morning glory. I like this little tool. It's a little wooden tool I got at some clay place a long, long time ago, but anything will work. A pencil will work, a pen will work. You know any of your wooden tools so so I get myself a ball and then I'm going to or somewhat of a ball <laughs> and then I'm going to start the top like this just get it going because I want to make this cute little curly cue so then I'll take the bottom, and I might have too much clay here, we'll see. And I'll go ahead and get that pinch pot started. You could also just push your thumb in there. You don't need a lot of tools for these guys. So don't think you need to run out. You don't even need the bark tool. Just, you can take your serrated rib and make bark texture. You could take your clay and push it onto a tree. Ooh, that would be fun. I think I need to, I do, I have thought about I need to make a, a bisque um, slab for texture by doing that, by putting it into a tree. So I'm basically just pinching with my fingers, um, making kind of a trumpet shape and smoothing it as I go. This clay is a little harder than I probably should be doing. I might have to do some cleanup as it cracks. But that's okay, because you know what? Stuff out in nature, it's all cracked and dried. And I mean, you could make these, you could do a haunted one, haunted house one. You could do a Christmas. I have thought about trying to do like a gingerbread house for Christmas, but I'm always so busy at Christmas and I never want to do them until Christmas. <laughs> I'm not one of those that gets all crazy for Christmas until there's snow on the ground. Right now, I'm crazy for Halloween. Halloween's just so much more fun to make for. Okay, so I'm gonna thin this out, get it wider, and then smooth out my... But so you can see where I've got the start of my could be a fun little mushroom cap, you know? It could be a trumpet flower that makes up the roof of your fairy house. There we go. That's looking better. So what I want to do now, since I want a little curly cue, I'm going to pull this, okay? Just like you would a, um, a handle on a mug. I'm just going to pull that extra clay up. And you have to do this there, not a really, really soft touch, otherwise you'll just pull that sucker right off. But 
grab that clay and in the meantime while I'm pulling this too I'm also kind of smoothing out my roof take my I do like the fingerprints and stuff when you're doing this because it kind of just adds more of that organic plant like look to it all right let me pull this up and then dry my hands off actually kind of get some of that slip off of there this makes it a lot easier to do this if your hands are fairly dry and then just like we did in the witch hat and the ghost you want to coax that into making a little curl how cute is that so cute all right so next step rip up the top of your log your little tree trunk and slip it find out where your front is so i usually put my front where my seam is so, so i'll pull it here and then i'm going to lay actually you know what i want to do i want to actually squeeze this in a little bit so it's not quite so straight up and down so we'll squeeze that in pull this back here figure out where we want it and then it's going to leave the impressions of where I need to score and slip so score that now sometimes if your clay isn't very soft um, you can do a coil here to help secure this roof on and I do like to give it a little movement a little personality by we'll go ahead and this is where our door is at so think you know awning this will probably be where our windows at so encourage that to kind of come up same with this one these make great candle incense garden art just cute 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 fun little fairy houses all right so now for the door you can do anything you want for the door you can actually cut the door right out like i did with this one um you could use a flower you could do one of those ones that we did before with the mold and i also like doing i have this stamp it's a wooden stamp again i can't tell you where i got it because i've had it forever and it's a tree i'm actually gonna steal some clay from over here and then I like to um, I like to make doors out of the tree, actually. So press that into there. Take your knife, and then I'm just going to cut around it and make a tree or make a door out of this tree. So that simple, okay? All right, score the back of that guy. We'll slip it really good. And then I'm going to set this on here. Don't you love it when you turn your phone off and it didn't go off? All right. So now I know where my door is at. Go ahead and score that. And it's going to go right over that seam. I'm actually going to add just a little bit more slippy stuff. And then I'm going to, actually I need to make sure that this is also 
this is super wet. So make sure that I come in here with this little tool and I will smooth that roof down inside and out. Make sure it's attached. But you could also, you know, have a roof that comes off for whatever reason you're using it. Maybe it's a little container and the roof is the lid for your chocolate stash is hidden. Or whatever else you want to hide. <laughs> no judgment here. Whoops, that brush did not get cleaned out. See, I got when you're switching clays from white to red, the red gets everywhere. So when we switch back, we are gonna have a major cleanup in the studio. All right, so I'm just gonna pinch my door down now just to make sure I have it down really well. Clean that up. I'm actually not going to clean up around the, the door because I'm going to show you why. One thing I like to do with these houses um, is add branches. I didn't add any branches to that to this little guy, but we are going to do it to this one. Just to give you an idea of some of the really fun things that you can do. Now, I don't worry about my coil being perfect. Like I said, <laughs> I am not into perfection. I will take my serrated tool and kind of wave it as I go down my coil. And this is going to end up looking like a branch. Just making sure I've got it all covered with lines. I don't care the design of the line. The more random they are, they be the better it is. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to twist it. See how it's looking like a branch? And I'm just going to dip it in the water and I am going to go over my door. This is my door trim, basically. Now, some of my houses, I've actually taken the branch up and around. Let me show you this guy, just to give you an idea. So I've taken the branch up and around the whole piece and added leaves. So it goes up and around the door <laughs> and I just lost a mushroom. That's okay. We'll take it. These get really fragile. <laughs> so I'll just take the mushroom off. And it was never even there. Okay. Let me set that down and not touch it again. All right. So I'm going to push this guy in. Make sure it's got a good connection. Another reason why I tend to work with the clay fairly wet. I also like the fact that since the clay is wet, it um, naturally morphs the clay because um, it's not going to hold itself up very well. And so it's going to do different things. I kind of go with it, very much a go with the flow kind of girl. So, just making sure I've got a good connection there. Okay, and I'm doing a little tiny doorknob. And I have pin and I'm just going to press that in and I have a cute little doorknob. 
All right. Now, let's do some windows. So basically windows, these were just round. You can do round windows, heart shaped windows, leaf shaped windows, flower windows. It's just whatever you would like to do. So I think I'm going to do probably this size. And I just put the little window in there. This one usually gets three. Actually, I think it's only going to get two. So depending on the size of them, but then you can you can go nuts with windows and shutters, window boxes. I've gone crazy on some of them. You can see how soft my clay is. I always leave the bottom open, but you can also not, you know, if you want it close form, you could add a bottom. So I'm just gonna clean up my window so there's no sharp edges. And then I like to, um, I like to make leaf awnings over the windows. So I'll just roll out some clay. So if you have a leaf, um, stamp that um, we've made out of bisque. But I also, this makes a really good, if I just press this into the clay, then I can take one of my leaf shapes. I think I'll go with that one. So this tree stamp's really, really awesome because then I can just make my leaf and it um, actually looks pretty good looks like a leaf even though this is a tree stamp see but you can also draw draw them on there so what I'll do is I will pinch this make it thin and I need to to do an awning I need to actually create a space for it to attach to the house so I'm gonna just score that Got too much stuff here. Okay. And then I will put that around my window as an awning. Press down those sides. Do the other one. The neat thing about these is you can make them as simple as you want, or you can go crazy. I've even made teapot fairy houses. Just fun. Just another fun way of exploring pottery so much you can do so much so many different ways to express yourself as an artist as a potter okay so there's our little windows and the little door so since this one's going to be a simple one <laughs> i am going to go ahead and i need to get some softer clay let's see I need to make a flower for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one of the morning glories, just like what's on there. So we'll start my hole, pinch pot that out. But if you have silicone molds of flowers, you could totally use those. Little cookie cutters with flowers. 
or you can pinch pot your flowers. So many fun different ways you can take it. Okay, so here is my little morning glory. I'm going to work on the stem for a minute since it's going to actually be seen. On the other fairy houses, these weren't seen. So I'm going to actually pull the stem out and hopefully not break it off. And then I'm going to take the stem, give it a little curl, okay, put my hole in there, and give it the five petals. And then just soften those lines with the brush. Okay, so we have our cute little flower. I think it needs to go right there. So I'll just score. You could even add a window into your roof up here if you wanted. So I'm just gonna put that on there my brush and just smooth it down make sure we got a good connection and then now we need another leaf for our morning glory I usually put a butterfly on these. I did a butterfly on that one, but I'm kind of thinking I'm leaning toward um, doing a ladybug. So let's do a ladybug on this one. I like the leaves when they hang over too. another leaf here. I usually do a lot of these in the springtime because that's when I'm really aching to do them but this year <laughs> because of the Christmas order I kind of let's see that looks kind of weird so maybe let's Well, let's see. Well, we're just going to set it there for now. I think I'm going to do another flower because that just looks weird. So we'll have the base with the leaves poking through, and then I'm going to do another flower. So for another flower, let's keep it simple with just a cute little... Oh, you know what? Hold on. Um, I have... Nope. That's my turtle. There's my flower. Have a little forget-me-not flower. Make your stamps. Make your own little stamps. Because um, for design work like this, it sure makes it easy if you've got your own little stamps already. So I'm just going to scrape the extra clay off of my stamp. And then... <laughs> I'm actually going to lick <laughs> the clay with this little ball and I can pull it out. Oh, and I just ripped it stuck. Okay, that's not going to work. So let me get a new wetter clay for this guy. So I'm just going to press it in. Press it into my mold. Pull it out and then score it. And we'll have a little bit of forget me nots on here. Which will just finish that off. And 
make that look just a little bit better. And you can go crazy with these flowers. Just remember, you'll be needing to paint them all. <laughs> so, your future self might not thank you for over decorating your fairy house. But, you might be the kind that loves to do that kind of work. My favorite is actually the making. When the clay is in this kind of state, I absolutely love it. So we're going to do a couple of these guys. I like odd numbers, so we'll probably do three. But if you put just a little ball of clay into your stamp, and then, let me see if I can get it out again, by either taking the, the wet piece of clay, ah, this one doesn't want to come out on me. There we go. If your spots are getting too small to score with the big tool, just grab your knife or a needle tool. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Yeah. Give those a little bit of a some movement, a little bit of a curl. Just clean up some of this slip in here. And let's make a butter or let's make a ladybug. I love ladybugs. So ladybugs are super, super simple. You make yourself a little bug, kind of an oval. Okay. And you need a needle tool. A clean one. Apparently. Okay, so this is how you do it. So you got your little guy, your little ladybug. I'm actually gonna get some of the lines off of. So I've got this kind of jelly bean, you know, or little peanut M&M. &M. So I come here at the top, kind of split it, and then I'm just gonna roll my needle tool and I got that little head. Okay. Then I come back here, start the middle of the back, and I go about that far. Okay. Then I just come down and give it its little butt. Cute, cute little butt. Isn't it cute? And then come in with another little tool and give it some dots, just random dots. And you have got yourself the cutest little ladybug. I'll do two eyes. I don't normally do a mouth. If you do a mouth, sometimes they get off looking a little sadistic. <laughs> but maybe you have a little sadistic ladybug. Cute! Alright, so let's go ahead and put our ladybug on here. right there because he's going to be going into that flower maybe he lives in that flower she <laughs> there's got to be male ladybugs I wonder if they're they get upset with the fact that they're referred to as female <laughs> The things that come into my head, seriously, you guys, I'd be worried. So, all right. Okay, so this guy's basically done. So, much, much simpler than the other one. And you can take this, it's a great jumping off start or point, because you could easily, well, we could easily put a little window here. So let's do that just because. See what I mean about how they can get carried away 
super, super fast. Let me go through there a little bit further. I might have to cut through because we're really, really soft. Oh, you know what? We need to do a fireplace. This could be a good fireplace. Or it could be a window. So clean this out. You know what? I'm going to cut some of this. I should have cut this at that 45, like I was talking that Sally Roper does in Jamaica that I learned from her. Tell you. If you think you know everything about pottery, it's time to quit. Because <laughs> pottery is one of those things that I'll, I will never learn everything. I'm always learning. Been doing this since 1983. I am always learning. It's the best teacher. And it's so good for problem solving. Because you gotta figure out how to do stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and get this uh, a leaf shutter, just like the lower windows. You could even put shutters on each side. I do that quite a bit too, but not so much on these little guys, the littler houses. So press that leaf into the table so that I get one side that can be attached. And then we've got, could have done a bigger leaf, I guess. This whole seems a little bit bigger. It's not, but. All right. Cute. So somebody's upstairs in the upstairs bedroom. You could even throw another one there. And if you wanted, you could put flowers. Do a little window box or a little flower with it. Let's see. I'm gonna make this video too long because, <laughs> I mean, I do this to myself. It's really hard keeping them super simple. But see, you could do a little leaf. Might just leave it just for the sake of um, the video so this doesn't go super super long because how much time yeah dang it all right 43 minutes sorry about that guys anyway so cute little fairy house cute little fairy house great starting off point to building your fairy house condominium or major development village or cul-de-sac <laughs> i don't know you can just Take it like crazy and, and do so many things. That's the best thing about pottery. Is there's just so many things that you can do. Sorry about the, the ride here. Anyway, if you like this, um, I do have somewhat of an announcement. I go in for surgery on October 12th for a knee replacement on my, what is it? The right knee. They did the left knee in March. They're redoing the left knee in November, so we gotta have this one done in October. So I'm gonna try and do some videos and have them in the queue, but if I go off the face of the earth after October 12th, I will see you in the new year, because that's probably when I'll be back to somewhat normality. Um, um, anyway, so that's it for me today, and um, I really hope that you go and start building your own little fairy house for your garden, your planners, for gifts for Christmas, and send me pictures. Um, easiest way to send me pictures is on my Instagram, Hobble Creek Pottery, and I'm on Facebook on Hobble Creek Pottery, but I'm not on Facebook so much. I'm more on Instagram. So anyway, have a great day, great weekend, and um, we will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.